well, I think I think you touched on one of the things that I really wanted to talk about was like how exactly has COVID impacted the universal basic income idea, because um, uh, I mean prior to COVID, when I would talk about uh, UBI, especially on the podcast, it was always in relation to automation, right? The the eventual you know destruction of all jobs, which is one of those ideas that that comes about whenever you're talking about artificial intelligence or robots, etc. Kind of the the end result would be a universal basic income scheme that would be you know employed whether nationally or globally. But it really seems like COVID, um, with the inability, like the forced inability of people to not work, um, universal basic income has kind of grown uh, as an idea from that. Is this is this uh, something that you're seeing as well? And maybe to kind of what scale uh, you're seeing this? Yeah, yeah, we're seeing that uh, on every continent. Yeah. Um, that universal basic income is discussed, and they call it an emergency basic income. Mm. Uh, we see we see that uh, well, some governments actually well uh, already already uh, uh, give money to the people uh, on a limited scale. Um, but there's also something else happening. I mean, it's also I, I also uh, come across more people that are afraid of basic income okay. uh, because they are afraid that it will be introduced as a means of uh, control uh, mm. um, and uh, linked to a social credit system, sure. uh, for example. And um, yeah, my answer to that is always, well, that, that might be their plan, <laughs> but in that case, it is not a basic income because it's not unconditional. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Right. And uh, I know that, for example, in Kenya, where the people already were in uh, were receiving a basic income because they were particip participating in that in the Give Directly um, uh, program, uh, we know that the people that were in that scheme uh, were more much more resilient uh, uh, against the lockdown measures. And that's, of course, uh, well, that's you don't need a university study to understand why. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're forbidden to 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 work uh, because of a lockdown, um, then yeah, you will not uh, receive money. And there's many, many, many people in the global south that are dependent on their daily income. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. so if, if today you don't receive money, then today you will not have food. Right. They spend it immediately. Yeah. So has there really been kind of a maybe a shift in mentality when looking at universal basic income um, towards this potential fear of like it increasing the, the bureaucracy of certain nations? I mean, you touched on that a little bit, but uh, I mean, before, I don't think that that was discussed very much. It was mostly focused on, as you said before, like decreasing poverty, uh, increasing educational um uh, attendance, you know, allowing people to get out of debt or start businesses. Has the narrative shifted a little bit towards, well, now we're maybe a little bit more fearful of UBI because these governments can kind of latch onto it and, and grow their own kind of uh, bureaucratic systems? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not so much a bureaucratic system because it's, 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 there's hardly any bureaucracy, of course, but it can be linked to, to, yeah. to um, a social credit system, you know, um, um, but what it has maybe triggered is that there are more groups working on a community-driven basic income. Mm, okay. um, so, I mean, with the model of, of the casino dividends uh, in the back of your head, you can imagine that you can actually build a system where uh, uh, the communities or the businesses uh, can contribute to, uh, to, to a basic income. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, with with new technologies like uh, blockchain, um, that is fairly easy uh, to do. Um, and for example, it also uh, if you if you realize that uh, services like uh, Airbnb or Booking.com or Amazon are actually algorithms mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, behind the scenes that now generate money for the happy few, you can also imagine that you can create those algorithms. Uh, where the money uh, is distributed to uh, to the to humanity, mm, and mm. Uh, there are many 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 programmers that uh, do not have to work anymore because they stepped uh, in the, into Bitcoin uh, in an in, at an early sure. stage, sure. and uh, there's a huge open source community where people are building um, um, basic income schemes. Uh, yeah, uh, first, you know, you know to, to, to basically to reach the people on an indivi individual basis. I mean, you, you, you don't even need to be documented anymore to open a wallet 
right. uh, on the blockchain so you can receive your money without uh, without an id even um mm -hmm. so that opens a huge huge potential um and a, a field of opportunities as i call it <laughs> um you know from the recipient side but also from from how to how to make this a sustainable uh, money